Okay, here we are for part uh, 1B of Judiciary. So let's just pick it right up. We ended with the district courts, and remember, just one last thing, remember they only have original jurisdiction. So now let's get to the next level. This is the middle level. There's only three. They're called circuit courts or courts of appeal. I will usually use the word circuit courts, but you have to know that they are the same thing. Okay, so these are appellate courts, courts of appeal. Uh, empowered to review all final decisions of district courts, and plus they hear appeals to orders given by regulatory agencies of the federal government. Again, we will talk about those when we talk about the executive branch, but this is where um, those would be um, appealed, the orders of those particular uh, agencies. All right, they have only, only, only appellate jurisdiction, absolutely no original jurisdiction. District courts, original only. Appellate courts, appellate only. Got to know that. Very, very important. All right. So there are 12 circuits um, created by Congress. Remember, Congress creates these courts, the district courts and the circuit courts. Um, and here's that same map from the last slide. Um, this time, remember, those big numbers are the circuits. And you'll see there's only 11 of them there. And you're going to go, Moran, what are you telling me? You just told me there's 12 and I only see 11. Well, we'll get to that on the next slide. Um, you'll see that, again, so we live in Georgia there. We are in the 11th Circuit. The 11th Circuit consists of Alabama, Georgia, and Florida. Okay, so normally when, it, when a case is appealed and the, the uh, Circuit Court will hear it, they hear it in what we call three judge panels. Three of the Circuit Court judges, of which there are a variety of number depending on the size of the court, of the circuit, sorry. Um, you will hear them, there'll be the attorneys for each side arguing in front of three judges. And the decision is, um, is by majority. Um, there are times when you can either ask um, after, a, after a case is heard by the three judge panel, or if it's really, really important and they think this is worthwhile, they will include all the judges in that circuit and that's call, called en banc. Um, that's all of the judges. That's not a three-judge panel, but the vast, 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 vast majority are the three-judge panels. And again, it is majority vote. They will write their opinions after it and all of that, but it's either going to be two to one or three to nothing. That is it on the appeal. And if it's if you lose, then that's pretty much you're done. And we'll get to the Supreme Court in a moment, and we'll see why you're pretty much done here at the circuit court level. Okay, so this is the 12th one that I told you about. U.S. Circuit, the U.S., sorry, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit is what they call this. Um, it was established, again, remember Congress does this, it was established in 1982, and it, it hears specialized appeals, it hears appeals about patents and international trade, claims against the United States, and this is what makes it such an important court. It hears all of the cases that involve the federal government and the regulatory agencies and things like that. It is really an important court. A lot of times it's looked at as a stepping stone to um, the Supreme Court because several justices on the Supreme Court have come from this um, federal circuit court. Um, the most recent one, uh, Brett Kavanaugh, was a member of this. Um, I'm pretty sure, if I remember right, Ruth Bader Ginsburg was from this court. And I think there's at least one other one on there that was from this particular court. So it's, it's one of those places where it's looked at as the second most important court in the land or the second highest court in the land. Something like that. All right. So again, circuit courts focus on errors or procedures. Remember, no trials, no no such thing as witnesses and defendants and juries and all of that stuff. It is just the judges and a couple of lawyers arguing the procedure problems or the law issues or the constitutionality issues. That is all that they deal with. They don't say uh, there's no guilty or innocent or anything like that. Again, so no trials, no testimony. Only argument by each side's lawyers. And an interesting thing that, we, that we'll get into a little bit, they set precedents for all the district courts in their circuit only. So if the 11th Circuit, say the one we're in, um, if they, uh, they come up and they make a decision, that sets a precedent for all of the district courts in Alabama, Georgia, and Florida. They have to follow that, but that's it. There could be another district, District 10 out there in the West, they might come up with something just the opposite. 11th Circuit might say, 
hey, uh, this is unconstitutional. And the uh, Tenth Circuit might go out there and say, hey, this very same thing is constitutional. So you've got two different courts with two different opinions um, about something. That's really a problem. And we'll get to how that's solved um, probably next time around. Let me talk about um, how the Supreme Court works. Okay. One of the things this is going to separate them from the Supreme Court, okay? They have to take all cases appealed to them. They have no discretion. They don't get to say, no, nah, we're not going to hear that, or no, nah, we don't like that one. They don't get to do that. They have to take and deal with everything. Okay, and again, that's a differentiation in a moment from the Supreme Court. Okay, so speaking of the Supreme Court, let's get to them and, and the structure here. Um, it is, of course, the top of the judicial system. It goes district, circuit, Supreme Court. Um, they ensure the uniformity and the interpreting of national laws because it should be the same across the country. Um, resolves national conflicts among states and maintains national supremacy of law, things like that. I'm going to pause for Sorry, I had to cough there. Okay, so continuing on. Um, they have, and again, so we've got to make sure we know this, district courts original only, circuit courts appellate only, Supreme Court both, 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 both. Original and appellate jurisdiction. And, of course, the case, Marbury versus Madison, we'll talk about very shortly, and it'll be your assignment here, um, is, a, is it actually a jurisdiction case? Okay, so how many justices are there? We should know this. Hopefully you do, that there are nine. That number is set by Congress. The, the Constitution doesn't say how many there are. It just says there has to be a Supreme Court. So Congress sets the number. The number nine, it has been stable since 1869. Started out the very first Supreme Court, they had six. They pretty soon figured out that you better have an odd number, um, things like that. And it's, it varied a little bit all the way into, and then again, 1869, they set it at nine, and it's been nine ever since. All right, there is one, the, the official names are there is a Chief Justice, and the other eight are Associate Justices. Um, and unlike the Appeals Court, right, unlike the Circuit Court, where they hear it in three judge panels, the Supreme Court hears cases all together all the time so all nine all the time um, no they don't divide themselves up or anything like that um, and this differentiates from the last slide from the circuit courts remember the circuit courts have to take all cases appealed to them the supreme court gets to decide excuse me they have discretion now give you an idea usually at least ten thousand cases a year are appealed to the supreme court coming out of the circuit courts they take less than 100. So they get to decide their course load. They get to decide their workload. And we'll talk later on about how they decide to take cases. Okay, so just really quickly, who are they specifically? Nobody's ever going to ask you on a quiz or a test or on the exam who the chief justice is, uh, who this person is. Is this person a justice of the Supreme Court or anything like that? But we're Americans. This is a, a government class. We should know this stuff. Okay, so this is just there. Okay, so there's the most recent picture. Um, if you have been paying attention, of course, we know that uh, a couple weeks ago, one of them died, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, I don't know if you can see my arrow, but if she's the short lady in the front, seated, seated in the chair, seated in the chair. Um, so I'm only going to name eight here. Um, so the Chief Justice, of course, is John Roberts, and what you've got is their current age and what year they were appointed and who the president was that appointed them. So Chief Justice John Roberts, he's listed first, although he's not the most senior. Um, he's 63. He was appointed in 2005 um, by George W. Bush. The most senior ju justice the, is uh, Associate Justice um, Clarence Thomas. He is about 70. He is 70 years old. Um, he was appointed in 1989 um, by George H.W. Bush. He is the uh, African-American man sitting um, to the, the Chief Justice is in the middle sitting to the Chief Justice's right. Um, then the next senior would have been Ruth Bader Ginsburg, of course, except she passed away a couple weeks ago. So next in line then is Stephen Breyer, um, who is 80 years old. He's the oldest justice now, appointed in 1984 by President Clinton. Next comes Samuel Alito. He is 68, appointed in 2006 by President George W. Bush. Next comes Sonia Sotomayor, um, she is the slightly taller Hispanic lady standing in the back. Um, she is 64 years old. She was appointed in 2009 by President Obama. 
The other lady standing in the back then is Elena Kagan. She is 58. She was appointed in 2010 by President Obama. The tall associate justice in the back on your left um, or uh, Chief Justice's right is Neil Gorsuch. He is 52, appointed in 2017 by President Trump. And then the most recent appointee, uh, Brett Kavanaugh, 54, appointed in 2018 by President Trump. Um, President Trump has appointed already a, a replacement for Ruth Bader Ginsburg, um, a lady named Amy Coney Barrett. Uh, the judiciary hearings for her start uh, next week, and she will most probably be confirmed um, a little bit before the election, most likely towards the end of October. So the Supreme Court will then have nine members. Okay, last, uh, sorry, uh, two more things. Um, original jurisdiction for the Supreme Court. Found in Article 3, Section 2. It involves these things. Foreign ambassadors. Between the, cases between the United States and a state. Um, cases between two or more states. Um, between a state and a citizen of another state. Um, and between a state and a foreign country. Okay, that's all listed. Article 3, Section 2. This is where the Supreme Court has original jurisdiction in these particular things. Very important for our case. Which brings us to our last slide for this part. Marbury versus Madison is, is uh, our first case in this unit. Okay, it does set up, we remember this, it sets up the power of judicial review. It sets up the idea that the Supreme Court at the, at the top level gets to decide constitutionality. If a law is constitutional or not, that's what judicial review means. The case itself, and you'll see that, is actually about jurisdiction. And it starts with way back when our friend, the Judiciary Act of 1789. And you will see this bit that, that matters here in the packet that you have to do. What the Judiciary Act did in the Section 13 is it added the idea of what we call writs of mandamus, and you'll see the explanation of that in there, to the Supreme Court's original jurisdiction. It said, if you need a writ of mandamus, you go to the Supreme Court first. In doing that, the court ruled that that act changed the Constitution because you can't add to the Constitution with a law. You added something to the original jurisdiction. Sorry, the Constitution only says your original jurisdiction is these things. If you want to put something else in there, you're going to have to amend the Constitution. Therefore, that part is unconstitutional. And you'll see that when you...